You just gotta find people that speak the language of creativity. I'm Sachi Moretti. I'm a designer from Connecticut. Growing up, I always admired clothes. Never admired them enough to um, like delve, delve into it, like knowledge-wise. Um, I started to gain more knowledge about clothes and how fashion works, and just more intricate stuff. Graduating high school, 2018. So like after I got out of high school, I was just like, all right. Um, I just want to apply my talents on a major scale. And you know, I had a hard time, you know, like many people, like presenting my ideas, and. Um, over time, I just lost that fear. So when it came to producing my ideas and showing them, like, I just wanted to be as transparent as possible with my audience that like, on how this process goes and you know, how, how they can to do, do what I'm doing. I like to view my stuff as way more intimate. Um, so like, that's where I get the, little, the, the artist standpoint from how I view myself is because you know, I'm, giving, I'm giving them a piece of what I'm thinking at night or whatever many time it may be that I'm designing. I just want to um, be able to like be myself around anybody. You know what I'm saying? And that and my work I feel like is a door is a door to that. You know, once you see my work and you meet me, you can kind of piece the piece, to pieces together on how I am. For me it's second nature, but for a lot of people I see that they struggle with that type of stuff, you know, taking that risk and, and you know something that's and that's um, that's this disheartening to hear to me, because it's like, it's so easy to me. And I, I try to instill confidence in people that I, that I um, speak to who have a hard time going through how they should execute whatever project they, they made, they want. Because it's, it's not only fashion, fashion when I talk about with people, it's like, you know, I try to delve, delve into what they want to do. And I'd be like, all right, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are the necessary steps you're taking to do that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever I can do to help, I try to help. And I try to reach out and shit. Yeah, I try to share as much as possible. I try to like, you know, if I see um, a, a smaller um, designer with a smaller following, you know, I'll, I'll share their stuff and stuff because, you know, it's, 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 I'm not gonna, it's not nepotism or anything, but you know, the, the social algorithm has a, has a good way of putting people who are already established in front of you and not so much as a, a good way of people who are trying and to be in front of you. And I think those people who try are actually more interested than the people who are established, you know, um, because it's new ideas. You know, I'm, I'm glad to live in an age where it's not like we wait on these big fashion houses to produce a line. We have the kids and we have people who are making new stuff every day and putting stuff on stuff and switching stuff up. I'm glad to live in that age, that type of creative renaissance. I can't explain it. It's, you know, it's bringing, it's bringing what we see on our phones to a store, to an area that's not so familiar with that type of style. And me being from an area that's not really familiar with any type of style, because um, it's not like I'm from any of the major cities like New York or Los Angeles, so I, my, my state kind of adopts styles of the cities that are close to us. So we kind of get um, a trickle down of what New York may do, or, and yeah, and, and stuff like that. So with no kind of fashion identity, I have a state with no fashion identity, it, be, it begins to just, you know, be repetitive. So, you know, stores, stores like this are really appreciated. You know, they bring people's ideas to eyes who may have never would have seen them in the first place.